FEMA Administrator Brock Long warned Hurricane Florence damage will be ugly, but we'll get through it as areas in North and South Carolina headed into the fourth day of unrelenting rains. Unfortunately, the event is still unfolding for the next 48 hours, Long told mate the press host Chuck Todd of the hurricane turned tropical depression on Sunday morning. As of right now, Long said emergency personnel are focused on life-saving efforts amid reports that the death toll has risen to 14, with 10 dead in North Carolina and 3 dead in South Carolina. There are 1,300 people in the field, doing search and rescue, supporting our state and local capabilities, from the National Guard to local swift water rescues, Long said. They've performed several hundred evacuations and rescues in isolated areas. However, Long said rescue efforts have been hampered by the fact that the storm has essentially parked itself over the region. We have to wait for the hazardous elements associated with the storm to exit the area before we can actually send our people in, he said. We never want to put our own people in harm's way. In the meantime, the Marines, the Coast Guard, civilian crews and volunteers have been doing what they can with helicopters, boats and heavy-duty vehicles to help in communities ravaged by flash flooding, storm surges and powerful winds. Universal Privacy Policy Ventus Key Privacy Policy The head of the Federal Emergency Management Agency said, so far Florence's damage has been as extensive as what was expected, saying, the National Hurricane Center did a phenomenal job of letting people know nearly a week in advance of what was coming. Everything that they've been predicting, the storm surge, the ocean rising, the coastal flood inundation, was realized. You saw the ocean rise anywhere from 9 to 11 feet, causing a lot of damage along the coast and in the back bay and inlet areas of the Pamlico Sound. And now what you're seeing is, we're seeing actual rainfall in 30 inches or more in some areas. So, we're seeing damage vary, you know, as predicted, unfortunately. Share this article Share one of the biggest obstacles facing officials right now is worsening inland flooding, which has closed several major highways and blocked access to remote areas in need of assistance. The frustrating thing about an inland flood like this in North Carolina, or South Carolina as well, is that you've got to wait for the water to recede in some cases to get people back in or to fix the infrastructure, Long said. He added that the agency is currently working out alternative routes to get supplies into affected areas on the coast. We just need to make sure that we're meeting the demands of taking care of people in shelters, he said. Long went on to praise North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper and Division of Emergency Management Director Mike Sprayberry for their strong responses to the storm. We're meeting their demands as they're coming up to us, and we'll get through this, he said of the leaders. It'll be ugly, but we'll get through it. Recovery is always a very frustrating process for people when they've lost their livelihood, but we're going to be okay. Todd later asked Long whether FEMA was utilizing any lessons it learned in the wake of Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico last fall, referencing a comment from Donald Trump this week, who appeared to say there was no insight to gain from the island's catastrophic storm. I think the president is being taken out of context there, Long said. I talked to the president every day this week and the Secretary of Homeland Security, and we discuss what we're trying to do as a result of last year. He's well aware of that. Long went on to suggest that the reason the recovery efforts in Puerto Rico were so abysmal was because FEMA didn't have much help in the weeks after the storm. The thing about Puerto Rico is that disaster response and recovery is a whole community team effort, he said. 
You have to have anybody from neighbor helping neighbor all the way up to the federal government response. I'll be honest, FEMA was the first responder and the only responder for many weeks going into Puerto Rico. The second half of the 10-minute interview was focused specifically on the controversy surrounding recovery efforts on the island territory, where Maria's death toll has been estimated at 3,000 people. In response to Trump's multiple tweets disputing the death toll, Todd said, 2,975 people died as a result of Hurricane Maria or impacts from Hurricane Maria, according to the Puerto Rican government. Does FEMA accept that number long responded, the numbers are all over the place. FEMA doesn't count deaths. The deaths that are verified by the local county coroners are the ones that we take. Todd then asked why the White House is concerned with the discrepancies in the death toll, to which Long replied, One thing about President Trump is that he is probably the one president that has had more support for what goes on back here. I think he's defensive because he knows how hard these guys behind me work day in and day out for a very complex situation. And it's frustrating. There's just too much blame going around, and we need to be focused, Chuck, on what is Puerto Rico going to look like tomorrow. Todd's final question addressed a Wall Street Journal article this week which claimed Trump was considering replacing Long as administrator at FEMA before Hurricane Florence hit because of the frequency of his trips home to North Carolina. Were you aware of this investigation? Are you cooperating? Todd asked. Oh, yeah, absolutely, Long said. Let me go ahead and clear up all the news. Secretary Nielsen has never asked me to resign. We have a very functional and professional relationship. We talk every day. We are both solely focused on Florence. Asked if he had any plans to resign, Long said, no. No, 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 I'm here to serve my country every day. That's all I do.